church history is is so exciting anyone who says that uh, church history is something um, that they don't need to learn they want to live in the now deceive themselves and uh, automatically throw out the bible because the bible in and of itself is church history and so uh, you know that's the first thing what is the Bible? What are the Gospels? It's the founder of the church's history. What is the Old Testament? It's the history of the people of God. Um, what, is, what is the Book of Acts? The Book of Acts is the history of the Acts of the Holy Spirit. And I believe with all my heart that Acts does not stop a chapter, whatever it stops, whether it's chapter 26 or 27 or whatever it is. It doesn't stop there. I believe that Acts goes on. I believe Acts is a living thing. I believe in Acts chapter 30, and Acts chapter 46, and Acts chapter 237, because God continues his Acts. How can I not be interested in what God has and is doing? Because God reveals himself in church history, and the church reveals itself as well in, in church history and makes a, a whole mess of it. But I want to read that in order to understand, in order to understand that there is nothing new under the sun. Nothing new under the sun. I remember people, um, as, they, as they discover certain, um, how can you say, um, emphases in, in church and in church structure. And they come, this is new, God has just revealed this to us. And they've never had church history. Because it's there. The, the, the same things, I, I remember the whole, um, uh, um, many people of, of, of uh, 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 charismatic brethren uh, coming and saying, you know, oh, this is this is this is a whole new thing, the charismatic thing, and and, and whatever. And no, 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 no. You don't know your Welsh church history. The charismatics in the 18th century, when you got the Howell Harris and you got Williams Pantakelin and and Daniel Rowland, these were the charismatics. They didn't speak in tongues. But man alive, these were charismatic and the most powerful. Time. William Williams Pantakele with his worship leading. It, this was the, the experience of the, of, the, of the 1960s, 1970s. wasn't brand new. The experience of Azusa Street and all the different things. That's not brand new. These, this has been happening throughout church history. Various things throughout church history. And um, uh, backsliding, the whole the church is going into a fossilisation. That, that shouldn't take you by storm. It's happened before. I want to understand what happens. I read church history. I need a, I need role models. The problem is today. The problem is today. Is is but if you don't get church history, you're going to get history. So you young people, I tell you, young people have got models. You ask them, young people, who are your heroes? And you get football players. In America, you get baseball players. You get film stars. You get people who are famous for being famous. And, all, and, and they're the heroes. Hey, what's wrong with the heroes of church history? I'm, I've been so influenced by some of these people. I love reading biographies. I, biography for me, and that's the essence of church history, depending on your historiography or whatever. But as, as, you, look, as you look at some of these great people, I read about them, I get excited about them. So I read in order. I'd give you a few. I've loved Ruth over the years. I'd rather Erasmus, but that's another point. Now, he's my, he's my great hero, and, uh, you know, I think uh, Luther should have learned far more from Erasmus. But that's a historical point for to Look at it, look at it. I mean, the, other, the, you know, you read of David Livingstone and the things he was involved in, William Carey, and the sacrifices in missions. And you read about these people, and you think, man, this is exciting. This, actually, this is better than the film. This is better than the latest movie. And you read it, and you get excited about it. I love to read, I love, love to read the early church fathers where there's Tertullian who at times is off his head but he is brilliantly off his head at times in his, in his great apology and just in matter in his great apology for Christianity. You know, you read it and there, there's great passion there and it's wonderful, you read it and, 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 and you see the parallels with today's society. I love seeing that. And then you go to Francis of Assisi, what a great hero. Oh, he's a Catholic, oh, great way. There he was preaching, sharing with people, sharing his life with people. Does it mean you've got to agree with everything he does? Of course not. But you can learn from the guy. And you go to Wycliffe and you go to Tyndale and you go to all these different people and uh, you, you go to Aquinas. <laughs> Believe it or not, if you want to get confused at times. But you know, you, you need to challenge yourself. And all these different people. And it does something. It's always done something for me.
Robert Murray McShane died 29 years old in, in, in the early part of the 19th century in Scotland. His life has always stayed with me. One of the earliest books I, I read moved me very deeply. Um, and, and you can read about these people and, and the movements and what God did. For years I, I, I studied revival and look what God did in revival. Now, I don't want to live. I don't want to live in 1904. I don't want to go back to the Welsh revival endlessly. I want to revive it now. I want to work now. But I'm encouraged by what I've learned. I, I, you know, there is a danger. I, I, hands up. I've got a danger of um, living in, you know, in the past. That, that, that can't be someone who's passionate about church history. No, I, that's not the point of it. The point of it is to learn from it, to be inspired by it, so that we can make church history. I'm so proud, I'm so proud because I'm not a writer, that I've written a book. Yeah, I'm so proud I'm a writer, but uh, uh, because I'm not one, and you know, uh, uh, or whatever. But you know, the point is not to write a book. The point is to write church history. And that's something we can all do as we get involved in our churches. That's writing church history. That's exciting. Because when you write that sort of history, it's a history that, that you're intimately involved with and the living God is there as well. So there's all sorts of writing church history and getting involved, but whatever way you look at it, I love it. Um, yeah, I do. No apologies. And uh, I married a church historian, so I guess that's the only way you can do it.